Anybody here? Well, it appears I have arrived early, as usual. It's just part of my nature. <laughs> 1860, I came to Colorado by way of ox cart. I purchased 160 acres at $1.25 an acre, and I called it Brown's Bluff. I said to the fellows in the clerk's office, I said, you sure you don't mind me scooping up all this good quality land for just $200? <laughs> well, the one guy laughed, and then the other guy, well, he snickered, and then they all guffawed. <laughs> Eventually, they got, one of them got to say through the tears, because they're laughing to the point of crying at this point. He said, oh, you go ahead and take it. Denver's never going to spread that far east. Mr. Henry Cordes Brown, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Kindly, I said. And I strode out with the deed in my pocket, unmocked, unshook, and unscathed. Those dis boys didn't see what I saw. They didn't know what I deep down in my guts knew myself. First eyes are fresh eyes. I guess I was just born with the gift of sight. <laughs> I strode back into that office just to be polite. And I asked those fellows if they'd mind if I pl plotted my streets on an east-west-north-south grid. Well, there they all went again, busting a gut at my expense. <laughs> oh, you do whatever you feel called to do, Mr. Henry Cordes Brown. Denver's real roads are never going to intersect with your far-out east ideas. <laughs> Lincoln. Sherman. Grant. Honorable names given to streets by an honorable man with smart and honest ideas. And sure enough, eventually, there those boys from the clerk's office came, needing to connect their real Denver roads with my forward-thinking grid. You know, all those uh, intersections off of Broadway, you know, Glen Arm, Tremont, where you get turned around if you don't stay wide awake at the reins? Well, you have them cynics to thank for that. I tried. To prove there were no hard feelings, I gave them 10 acres back free of charge so they could build the Capitol. Brown's Bluff became Capitol Hill, and I focused my sights on a vision of a palace befitting this great state. The Brown Palace. 400 rooms, each one with a view to the outside. Guests could choose whether they wanted to see the morning or the evening sun. They could choose the light that best suited their eyes. The view of Denver and all that I saw it could be, that's what always suited my eyes best. The light shining over the mountains night or day reminded me all the time of everything that I could achieve. <clears throat> yeah. that, uh, that song, America the Beautiful, well, that song was inspired by the view from Pikes Peak, and that is no accident. That place is pure poetry. Just ask Spencer Penrose. He, he envisioned the Broadmoor much the same way that I saw the Brown Palace. He invested in the Pikes Peak region because he knew that bringing business, work, and opportunity to the people created growth and it created pride. Penrose and the Tut brothers. Now they saw this the way nobody ever could. They saw this land and they fell in love. And you nurture what you love. They started the El Pomar Foundation to enhance and grow the future well-being of the people of Colorado. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I can't stand here all day yammering. I got to get that railroad from Denver to Cheyenne. I got a meeting with the Denver Tramway Company, another meeting with the Bank of Denver. Oh, that reminds me I got that check to write for $1,000 to get the Denver Public Library started. And on top of that, I am going to go and become a founding member of the Denver Board of Trade, which... If you ask me, should someday be called the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, I think it's got a nice ring to it. Yeah, it may be years and years after I'm gone, but I can still see it happening.
sky the bright stars glittered on the banks the pale moon shone it was from an august evening party i was seeing nelly home good day young lady right are you my history tutor i'm mr william byers mr byers i need to write a really strong paper oh well I happen to know a thing or two about a thing or two when it comes to creating a really strong paper, Miss, uh... Beg pardon, it doesn't seem we've been properly introduced. My name's Jamie, Jamie Chu. Sorry, I thought my mom might have told you that when she hired you, but of course she didn't tell me you'd be coming out of a trunk. Ah, well, entrepreneurs come from the darndest places, especially the Colorado kind. You know, it takes a unique and wily spirit to conquer the rugged Wild West. I just want to conquer this paper. Yes. It was April 23rd, 1859. I'd come out west to take advantage of the gold strikes, and I discovered that if there is one thing the people of this great state can always use, it's news. See, the power of the media and communication can never be underestimated. So, I dragged a printing press by ox cart all the way from Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. And that was hard work, let me tell you. Then I sent some men out to gather stories. Now this was back in the day when news was gathered by ponies. By ponies? News hounds on ponies. News hounds on ponies. Journalists on horseback. These days we use the internet, or Twitter. You know what those are, right? Yeah, of course I do. Uh, but anyway, back to the race. We had to hurry, the Cherry Creek Pioneer was hot on our heels, but I knew I could do it. I had a passion and a vision. I knew I could do it. Be the first? Be the best. But did you get your paper out first? <laughs> Miss Jamie, we beat them by 20 whole... Weeks? Oh, easy now. <laughs> days? It's days, right? <clears throat> minutes, 20 whole minutes. Congratulations. And that's how the Rocky Mountain News was born. Vision, determination, and down to the wire competitive spirit. That was you? You gave Colorado its first newspaper? That must have been a huge risk. Oh, you've got to risk big for great reward. But I was sure, sure that what I was doing was a thing that had to be done. You've got to believe. So you were a newsie. Oh, and then some. As Postmaster General, I saw to it that the people received free home mail service. I worked with Walter Cheeseman to bring the first telegraph and the first railroad to the area. <sighs> People long to feel connected. Now, Cheeseman, of course, went on to bring Denver Union Station. Man, now there was a man with a vision for the future of Denver. This was back when the city only had four or 5,000 people in it. But we saw ways to make this city a place where people would want to be. You have to believe. <laughs> That's right. You'll have to believe. You might want to take notes. That's what I'm doing. Without paper? On my iPhone. On your what? No offense, but you're worse at technology than my mom. She's not even on Facebook. I have always been completely committed to the power and meaning of language, and I have no idea what you just said. Times have changed since the days of the old minds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I came from Burma proper with a wash bowl on my knee. I'm bound for Colorado, the gold dust for to see. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun's so hot I froze to death, and brothers don't you cry. Oh, Colorado, that's the land for me. I'm bound to Colorado with a wash bowl on my knee. Did I hear somebody say mines? Let me guess, you're also here to help with my history paper. Well, I am always happy to help where I am needed, and I was born to make history. Miss Jamie, this is Mr. Horace Tabor. William Byers, as yeah. I live and breathe, well, I haven't seen you in 
How long has it been? What year is it? 2014. 2014. <laughs> you know, I always had an eye toward the future, but I, I never saw myself standing smack dab in it. That, that's some trunk you've got yourself there. 2014. Well, I guess that means we haven't seen each other in about 115 years. It's been a long time. Well, you look good, Byers. Yes. I see you still have that beard. Oh, well, it's part of my legacy. <laughs> well, did I hear you mention the mining industry? I never would have come to Colorado if it weren't for the mines. A lot of Colorado visionaries saw potential in that field. Mining, energy, oil, and gas. Of course, it didn't take me long to realize that I could keep my head down and work, or I could make my work minding the miners. Ah, uh, this man was a millionaire in a day when there were very few millionaires. And with that money, I gave the people infrastructure. I built whole business districts, schools, fire departments, opera houses, railroads. I even did some time in politics so I could advocate for the needs of the people of Colorado. I was even a U.S. Senator. For 30 whole days. No need to split hairs, Byers. <laughs> so how do you build a city? You wrestle your doubts to the ground and invest in the betterment of your community. Believe in your dreams. Oh, couple that with some good business sense and savvy and you're on your way. Yes, and if you have a passion, pursue it. Work hard and pursue it. And don't be afraid to dream big. The sky's the limit, there's no mountain too high. We are the men of the infantry with a glorious history. On our own two feet, on our boat we will defeat. Light fighters marching on to victory. We go where others dare not go. Through the heat or cold or snow. We are proud to be in the army of the free. Climb to glory mountain infantry. Climb to glory mountain infantry. Soldier Peter Siebert Sr. reporting for duty. At ease, men, I'll take it from here. Oh, hey, Tabor, um, yeah. have you ever heard of Facebook? Hmm. Can't say that I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Boy, singing Climb to Glory really takes me back. Are you writing about war in that history paper? Well, it wasn't a requirement. Besides, I wouldn't know what to write about. Good. I hope you never do know. We fought to keep you safe. May you never know the horrors of war. So you were in a war? World War II. Italy. The Reaver Ridge operation. I took some heavy shrapnel. Skiing was my life. They told me I'd never ski again. Heck, I don't think they thought I'd make it through the night. You must have been so scared. I was. But more than scared, I was determined. I'm not telling you this to make you feel bad. I'm telling you this because I did ski again. And I skied well and often. Have you heard of Vail Ski Resort? Of course. Before there was a resort, there was a huge, beautiful mountain waiting to be discovered climbed and conquered. It took me seven hours to get to the top of that beauty. I had to blaze my own trail. I remember the sky was that perfect Colorado blue and the air shot crisp in my lungs. Once I stopped, it was perfectly still, quiet. All I could hear was the crunch of snow under my boots as I made this slow motion circle, shifting my weight from side to side, taking it all in. And in that moment, I knew, deep down I just knew, I was standing on the top of my dream. It was that easy? The recognition of the dream was like that. The fulfillment of the dream was a whole other ball of wax. You mean ski wax? <laughs> I'll tell you who can tell you about ski wax. Thor and Jerry Groswald. When they weren't happy with the quality of existing ski equipment, they started their own company, 
made their own skis, the Groswald Ski Company. They were so good at what they did that the first U.S. Olympic gold medal was won on a pair of Groswald skis. Of course, the skier was pretty darn good, too. <laughs> I was developing Vail. They were developing Ajax Mountain in Aspen, the Monarch Ski Area near Salida, Arapahoe Basin, Camp Hale. They saw to it that the men of the 10th Mountain Division were always taken care of. Berthed Pass, Copper Creek, Mary Jane. But I was committed to Vail. That torch was eventually passed to Harry Frampton, who went on to further develop Vail and Beaver Creek. Rod Slifer became the first realtor in Vail. He turned that place from a ski area to a mega resort. He brokered deals. And his wife, Beth Slifer, an interior designer, she went in and prettied them up. The Slifers exude an unparalleled dedication to Vail Valley. When skiing is in a person's blood, they do anything to pass that passion on to others. Everyone should know the beauty of Colorado on skis. That and the power of a stick of dynamite. Dynamite? Some folks look at a rock-solid mountain and think switchbacks. I, on the other hand, think tunnel. The Eisenhower Tunnel. Did you meet a lot of movie stars in Vail? Oh, it was incredibly glamorous, let me tell you. When I first started out, I was the one on latrine duty. Let me tell you a little secret. When you're the boss, there is no job too small. There is only duty to the success of the operation. If you want it, you're going to have to stay more focused than you would ever imagine. Set that goal and never, ever, no matter what, give up. They told me I'd never ski again. <laughs> so I opened my own ski resort. Mr. Siebert, thank you for everything. You're welcome. Could I ever be brave enough to, I mean, how would I even know if? Roll out a barrel, we'll have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrel, we got the blues on the run. Sing boom to roll, sing out a song of Now's the time to roll the barrel for the gang's all here. Who on earth could this be? Uh, hey, Dolph Coors, Golden, Colorado. Wow, have you been in this trunk the whole time? I was a stowaway on a ship from Germany to Baltimore. You get used to it. Oh, uh, don't close that just yet. Charles Gates is right behind me. He's parking the car. Oh, I had to park all the way over at the Tabor Center. It's magnificent, though. That Robert Toynton sure can build a building. The man is a genius at industrial engineering, contracting, and manufacturing. Now, wait. I don't get my own song. Barrels roll, tires roll. Besides, who doesn't love beer? We manufactured rubber, not tires. We were the world's largest non-tire rubber manufacturer. And Coors is the largest single-site brewery in the world. Yeah. We sell 17 million barrels a year. Not, Not bad, bad for, for a day's, day's work, work, eh? <laughs> you know, it's a privilege to do business in the land of the free, mm. where anything's possible. When I was young, I started a chicken business. Chickens? Yeah, for the eggs. It was an egg-laying business. Better than your business laying an egg, I suppose. <laughs> Were chickens your passion? No, 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 no. We used them to generate capital so we could raise the money we needed to do the things we wanted. You know, a business has to have resources. Yes, like Clear Creek. Now that is an ice-cold brood at the source resource. It ain't no downstream beer. <laughs> it's Coors. <laughs> Was beer your passion? I will confess, yes. <laughs> I started out early as a brewer's apprentice. Beer was something I knew, and it was something that I knew I could do well. You improve on the future by expanding on the past. You, you, you learn, you, you get ideas. Yeah, you test, you research, you develop. Mostly, though, you listen to the needs of your community. And I've manufactured everything from eggs to aircrafts, from belts to batteries to barnyard boots, and that's just on a slow day. Those were his gunslinging days. <laughs> oh, the magic of youth. Diversification relies on new energy and fresh ideas. Not to mention prohibition. 
Right, well, <clears throat> prohibition required some creative diversification. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of invention. That's right. I manufactured cement, porcelain, and malted milk. Now, there's a history lesson for you. When life gives you lemons, you make malted milk. <laughs> there's money in milk. There's money in chickens. There's money in sugar beets. Just ask Charles Betcher. He diversified, too. Hardware, banking, ideal cement. Right, and his son, Claude Betcher, kept the family spirit alive. The Betcher Concert Hall, Children's Hospital, the Betcher Foundation, created with the intention of keeping the best and the brightest right here in Colorado. See, there's philanthropy in Colorado. Oh, there's money in cattle. Just ask John Iliff. He came to Colorado with $500 in his pocket, and he sold goods to the miners at the Mercantile. Just like Horace Tabor. And he turned that $500 into $2,000. Then he bought cattle. Then more cattle. Then, at the height of the industry, he had over 15,000 acres and over 26,000 head of cattle. Great cattle king of the West. Where's the beef? There's the beef. <laughs> That's a lot of cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of cheeseburgers. And when he died, his wife left $100,000 to the Isle of School of Theology because the Wild West needed to train more preachers. Now there is a man listening to the needs of his people. Have you ever heard a cattleman curse? Oh, thank God for Isle of... Mm. Ken Momfer was also a great beef baron. Now there was a man with a lot at stake. Oh. <laughs> I think I get it. <laughs> This great state needs pioneers like you. We're just here to pass on the spirit. Uh, us old timers, we always look to the young. Why, for five generations, my whole family, including Bill and Pete Coors, have taken what I created and made something infinitely smarter and better and more sustainable. The future soars on the wings of your courage, young lady. Yes, on your instinct and insights. There is nothing standing in your way. Yep, surround yourself with People you love, and don't be afraid to stand up strong for your ideas, even when people call you crazy. You don't think egg laying is just a little crazy? <sighs> you see what I mean? And I didn't lay the eggs, the chickens did. Sure. It was entirely normal. Sure, sure it was. <sighs> no one sees the world in the un unique way you do. You have a competitive advantage just by being you. Make us proud. Come on, let's go. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. This time, I'm driving. If necessity is the mother of invention, then innovation must be like following the stars in the night sky. Mysterious yet constant. Innovation is the guide to greatness. Oh, give me land, lots of land under starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze And listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees Send me off forever, but I ask you please Don't fence me in Hats off to the leaders of Colorado industry To Bruce Benson, the Benson Mineral Group a pioneer in oil and gas, he drilled his first two oil wells all by himself. From a one-room schoolhouse to the president of the University of Colorado. Really? No kidding. Just turn me loose, let me straddle my old saddle underneath the western skies. To Daniel Ritchie, a man who always holds the greater good of the people as his top priority, the 16th Chancellor of the University of Denver, I worked with him to bring ethics, values, and social responsibility to the heart of the university's education goals. To Dan Ritchie, the Cowboy Chancellor. <laughs> On, On my Cayuse, let me wander over yonder, yonder till I see the mountain rise. To Ray Duncan, a Duncan Oil Inc., founder of Purgatory Ski Resort, and to Jack Vickers, founder of Castle Pines Golf Club. To industry, to ingenuity, to, to golf. golf.
I want to ride to the ridge where the west commences and gaze at the moon until I lose my senses. <laughs> to Lanny Martin of Platte River Ventures, a man serious about industrial, chemical, and metal companies, art, the Colorado, the, which one is it? The Central City Opera, <laughs> wireless communications, and golf. golf. And, and I, I can't look, look at hobbles, and I can't stand fences. To Fred Hamilton of Hamilton Oil Corporation, a roughneck and a roustabout in the oil industry who cleaned up nice enough to become chairman of the Denver Art Museum, a success at all he does. Except golf. He struggles at golf. Yeah, Ooh. that's true. Very true. Ooh. Don't fence me in. <laughs> <laughs> to Phil Anschutz, the epitome of the American entrepreneur. Modern day J.P. Morgan. He has mastered and reshaped industries to the point of restructuring entire economic landscapes. Oil and cattle, stocks and sports. Real estate and railroads. Telecommunications and entertainments. You name it, he does it. Don't fence him in. <laughs> Don't fence me in. <laughs> Now that, that is a song after my own heart. Bill Daniels is my name. Uh, the father of cable television. The cable king. <laughs> Captain Video. Ooh. Oh, I love that last one, Captain Video. That's cool. Well, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Do you have a checking account? I do. Excellent. Way to go. You know, I started the first bank for young people, the Young Americans Bank. Junior Achievement also offers courses in smart money management. It's important to be smart with your money. Well, you may need a loan to start your own business. All right. 19 years old, L. Ray Jeppesen borrowed $250 from his customers on his newspaper route to purchase a $500 airplane. <laughs> he went from prop turner to wing walker to the 27th man in the country to have his own pilot's license. Signed by Orville Wright himself, he saw the sky with fresh eyes and created what was needed. Just like Samuel Adams, who helped form and grow Frontier Airlines, serving the community while building a business at the same time. Yeah. And Lewis Clinton Jr. was also a great pioneer in aviation. He did everything he could to further the field, including starting a flight school to train the best of the best. <laughs> and to think. Colorado Aviation was born out of a $250 loan. <laughs> now there was a loan investment yielding many future returns. <laughs> Good old Captain Jep. And your Captain Video. Uh, actually, they call me that because I was an innovator in cable television. You invented cable television? Well, I wasn't the first, but we fulfilled a huge need out here for the people out west. Um, using microwave technology, we were able to bring the spirit of television into the homes of the people who live outside the boundaries of broadcast stations. So you like technology? Like technology. <laughs> I love it. Ah, uh, the moment I saw a television program shooting out across the universe, a, a program bringing me something from far away, I knew I had to be a part of it. I, I saw instantly the power it had to bring people together. Were you watching something really important? Mm -hmm. An inaugural address? The news? Bigger. I was in a bar in Denver watching boxing. <laughs> boxing? <laughs> yep. I was the undefeated New Mexican Golden Gloves champion. I love boxing. I love all sports. There is a great connection between sports and business. Uh, discipline. Perseverance. Pushing yourself to your greatest potential. We are all stronger than we think we are. I learned similar lessons in the military. I retired as a full commander. And still had time to become the king of cable? Well, I was relentless in pursuing my dreams. I saw the future in technology. It is a gift to be one or two steps ahead, to look down the road or up into the sky and get hit with a vision. Standing on the top of a mountain. Selling a mine or a washbowl. Jesse Schwader bought the people's Samsonite luggage. Jake Jabs brought Colorado American Furniture Warehouse. <laughs> and commercials with exotic animals. <laughs> <laughs> I was hit with a vision sitting in a bar watching television. Alan and Gerald Phipps made sure Denver kept those Broncos. Yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> yep. Omaha Buyers was coming from Omaha with that print and press on an ox cart. <laughs> Walter Coble gave us mixed use in real estate. He believed in protecting the land and using it wisely, giving people quality of life as they live, work, 
work, shop, study, recreate, worship, and travel. Oh, and Franklin and Joy Burns gave us high quality affordable housing, the DC Burns Realty and Trust Company. Now they met on a golf course. Oh, they <laughs> did. And Joy is a true champion. The, the Women's Bank, the Burnsley Hotel, the first woman to chair the Denver Metro Convention and Business Bureau, chairman of the, of the board of the University of Denver, and the only woman on the stadium district board. First she'll build it, then she'll lead it. <laughs> Charlie Gallagher of Gallagher Industries brought innovation in industry and packaging. He found inspiration in Windex, Folgers, Crisco, Everything but the kitchen sink. Yep. Apprenticing under a master and knowing deep down that you can do it better. <laughs> it's a moment of divine inspiration. Not that you're going to succeed, but that you're going to fail if you don't even try. Yeah, and remember to invest in your resources. And in my opinion, your greatest resource is your community. Mm. Strive for excellence in all you do, and that includes, on, that includes how you treat people. Yes. An unethical business is no true business at all. Here, here, here. They have ethics courses at the University of Denver Daniels College of Business. <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, you're Mr. Daniels. <laughs> the Mr. Daniels. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Oh, that's okay. Being called Captain Video makes me sound young and cool. <laughs> and what about darling? Oh. Do you mind if I call you darling? Oh, that's Helen Bonfils. She calls everyone darling. <laughs> As a former actress and managing producer of the Elitch Gardens Theater, I'd say that sounds like my cue. <laughs> I said hello, darlings. Well, hello, darlings. It's so nice to be back here where we belong. You're looking so well, darlings, I can tell, darlings. You're still growing. You're still growing. You're still growing strong. You're celebrating business leaders with a touch of theater, passion, innovation, and philanthropy. With great big hearts, fellas, we're greater than the sum of our parts. Fellas. Colorado Business Hall of Fame Bearing over 100 names The Colorado Business Hall of Fame Without it, Colorado wouldn't be the same The Colorado Business Hall of Fame Is spectacularly vibrant and essential <laughs> What a gas! I haven't been on the boards in years oh, I love the theater Thank you, gentlemen. It has been fabulous, but you are excused. <laughs> uh, may I say one more thing to Miss Jamie? Of course. I've got two words for you. Ethics and philanthropy? Oh, uh, free enterprise. It's the eighth wonder of the world, and it's your duty to protect it. Of course. <laughs> oh, and contact the Daniels Fund about a scholarship. I consider it an honor to support young people. Now, you take care. Oh. And good luck. <laughs> Miss Bonfies. Oh, please, call me Miss Helen. Miss Helen, you didn't come out of the trunk. Darling, a woman cannot allow herself to be relegated to a box. <laughs> Besides, my years in the theater have taught me the importance of making a grand entrance. <laughs> So you made your fortune as an actress? Cherish the thought. The theater is a true love, but the newspaper business, the Denver Post, was like my child. When I take something on, I take it on with all my heart. My father taught me that. I took over the Post from him. He was a great man. You're the first woman I've seen here today. I'm glad you came. Women in business isn't just possible, it is essential. That's why I've come, to encourage you to keep reaching for your dreams. Dana Crawford, well, she revitalized Larimer when the rest of those around her wanted to tear it down and start over. She could see what others couldn't. Can you imagine what would have been lost? All oh, that history. Ann Padilla, well, she created a staffing service that put people to work, and she gave them career counseling so they could explore what it was that truly made their hearts sing. People need bread and roses. 
Jamie, you have a whole future ahead of you. My dad says the Belle Bonfils Blood Center has saved countless lives. And I've been to the Helen Bonfils Theater Complex at the Denver Center for Performing Arts. Oh, darling, you didn't have to do that. But I'm so grateful that you did. There are so many ways to make an impact. Oh, Kathy Finland is a marketing genius who has given so much to her community. The Denver Zoo logo, a benefactor for the Denver Art Museum and the Children's Hospital. So much spirit and, and artistry and passion. <laughs> Not to mention her championing young lives and business through her involvement in junior achievement. Sound familiar? I'm involved in junior achievement. Everyone there has given me so much. They've instilled in me confidence, taught me creative ways to achieve my goals, and opened my eyes to all the possibilities and opportunities that are waiting for me in this life. Yes, they've given you knowledge and pluck. From here, you're unstoppable. You have to give your whole heart. Oh, darling, next time I see you, I'll be applauding you from the wings as you are inducted as a laureate into the Colorado Business Hall of Fame. Deal. <laughs> I do know that I want more than anything to be associated with all of you amazing people. Well, I'll tell you a little secret about networking. If you want to rub elbows with the smartest men in the room, be the even smarter woman in the room. But that may take a while. Well, you never know. Time has a way of traveling that may surprise you. I'll say. One woman's act of courage today can make the world brighter tomorrow. I'll be seeing you, darling. <laughs> two Words to a Brighter Tomorrow by Jamie Chu. And my two words will be free enterprise. I'm not just gonna ace this paper tomorrow. I'm gonna change the world. Don't fence me in. Let me ride through the wide open country that I love. 